All right. Let me double check to make sure I fixed a few things. I may need to go back to yeah. Um, so pull Genji and Berserker. Pull Genji and Berserker. Yep. So I finished every hunt except for three. Uh, one of which I decided to save on camera, and the other two I can't unlock yet. I'm actually curious if I was able to get anything as a consequence of doing so. You're probably thinking, oh man, why would you do all those off camera, Lore? Because they're boring! Like, I was doing those while, you know, doing other stuff. There's nothing new about them. They're, they're just mobs we've already fought with more HP. What's yeah. I owe you on her? There's nothing interesting about them. What So, I'm going to last you a good while. There. Why not? Go and grab Ouroboros, because why not? It's a minuscule bad. upgrade, but sure. And yeah, we apparently need another Oracalcum. And uh, my build that I was using for the bosses is this. It's actually pretty basic. Um, so we start off with Gouge, Duh, and Dancing Steel. And all of that's just to build up Zensetsuken and, of course, break Stagger. The rest of their Stagger is broken by Diamond Dust, and then we pop a Giga Flare and then a Zensetsuken. Our filler is Wind Up and Earthen Fury. Although, for running around, I might change that up. Do I feel optimized? No, but I don't care. I'm not that big on min-maxing. I never have been. I know that there are ways to no really min-max my output, and I just kind of am not super invested in doing that. Sid, I was wondering if you could help me. Oh, and for those of you on the VODs, today will be side quests, but hopefully we'll actually reach the DLC of this VOD. We'll see. It depends what with. A bearer. But recently freed from his bonds, is keen to join the Curse Breakers. As you know, the work we do is not easy, which is why we test every volunteer's suitability. I was hoping you could oversee this one's evaluation. I don't mind, but why this one? Because he wants to be a scout. Our ranks are filled with men and women capable of breaking chains and putting slavers to the sword. But scouting, we're few with the nose for that, which is why we still rely so heavily on Gav. And since he accompanies you on so many of your missions, I thought you might be better placed to recognize the traits in him that we should look for in those who'd fill his boots. Sounds reasonable. So you're happy to oversee the boy's test, then? One can never have too many scouts. Truer words, Sid. I'll let the Initiate know that you'll be attending his trial, and that he is to proceed directly to Northreach in readiness. No time like the present, eh? No time like the present. I'll await you there. Oh, sorry, I thought that's what you meant, Equalitas. My apologies. Oh, In that case, yeah, no, I feel like I'm doing good out there. And par arguably more importantly, I'm actually still enjoying the combat for what it's worth. Nazaire might at least have mentioned where in Northreach he'd be testing this recruit. I'm nervous. Well met, Sid. This is the Initiate. Ember, present yourself. At your service, Master. Yeah, Please, just Sid. There are no Masters here. Your life is your own. Oh, of course. Thank you, Sid. The Sergeant says you'll be evaluating me at my trial. To become a Scout, yes. You are aware of the dangers inherent in that role. I am. But I swore I'd face them. Just like the man who saved my life. And who would that be? Gav! It was him who found me and freed me. No magic, no support, just one man and his nose. Came and sniffed me out. It taught me what one man can do if he puts his mind to it. And I've been training ever since, so that one day, I can be someone's saviour, just like Gav was mine. <laughs> I'm sure he'd be flattered. You clearly have good intentions, Ember. And it sounds like you're under no illusions. Stick to this path and you'll make a fine curse breaker. 
So, what? Have I passed? <sighs> you haven't even started yet. Now listen. Not far from here is an Imperial lookout, East Watch. The guards there record all their sightings in a logbook. You are to find it and bring it here. And bring it here, right. Anything else? No. Sneaking into a heavily guarded Imperial outpost and stealing the logbook would be quite sufficient. You will need to assess the situation, determine a point of entry, create a distraction and effect an escape, all without being discovered and thrown into an Imperial oubliette. Ember, Gav isn't our best scout because he can do everything. It's essential that you know your limits. Know my limits, right. I won't let you down. He's dead. Or we'll have to go rescue him. It shouldn't be as dangerous as I made out. But keep a weather eye on him all the same, would you? On my way. Good day, oh, game for chill. Back. And offshore Twitch Trust account. Me. And thank you, Seraphim, as always. As a reminder, you could put those towards specific genres of games if you don't feel like putting it towards dealer's choice. But elsewise, I will put that towards Kingdom Hearts 4. Yeah, I was messing around with a Shiva-based build. They stay frozen for a really long time if you do that right. He has this. Why, Giga? Why do you stand me so? Oh wait, it's because Dragon Age 4 is gonna suck. That makes perfect sense. Proceed. Got my new sword equipped. Now that I've done all the hunts. Yep, no, I do. It's not my fault, Giga. I didn't make the game that you know of. Okay, okay, you got me. I actually made Dragon Age 4 and I specifically made it to suck. These are clean kills. Perhaps young Ember really is ready. Yeah, kills. Ah! And there's the screen. Or maybe not. That's the hope, Mad Overlord. We'll see. Damn it. We do have a bunch of side quests Ember, still. Draw your sword! Oh, oh, oh god! Then run! Uh, um. If you want him, you'll have to go through me. As you can see, I've discovered that opening with that is actually a really good opener because the enemy almost always takes a second to get going. And so they're almost always sitting there for that one initial punch. And it does some decent scatter. Or not stack, scatter. Stagger. This One thing about the hunts, I got tired of looking at Giga Flare. Ember, are you? Scouts really are a rare breed. <sighs> Back to Northreach it is then. Interesting. I mean, we don't want the guy to die. Killing people in training is not quite as effective a strategy as history would have you believe. I didn't expect you back so soon. Where is Ember? How did he fare? I... thought I'd find him with you. He must have fled. 
I followed him to Eastwatch, where I found him being set upon by a wild Avis. He was just standing there. Didn't even draw his sword. I had to step in and take care of things. But by the time I had, he was nowhere to be seen. I assumed he'd set off in your direction, but... Apparently not. Oh, I'm sorry, Sid. I knew the boy had a nervous streak, but he seemed like... The right man for the job? I believe this is the logbook you tasked me with retrieving. Hey, How did you... Don't you tell me you breached the tower while Sid was busy saving your skin. What? Wasn't that what you asked me to do? To bring the thing back without getting caught? He has you then, is there? And he did it all on his own. But Sid, he... He did what he thought was best. And now I have to decide whether I agree. Of course. We'll await your evaluation back at the hideaway. Don't you leave my sight. Yes, Sergeant. I mean, he does have a point. Know your limits was one of the things we told him. This won't be an easy decision. You should have seen him. The thing didn't stand a chance. Yeah, neither did you, I hear. Welcome back, Sid. Welcome back, Sid. Yes. Welcome back. Trip wasn't too much of a pain in the ass, I hope. Truth be told, it was me who suggested roping you in to help with the trial. But from what I hear, things didn't go quite as planned. No, they most certainly did not. So, did he pass, yes or no? What do you think? I'm actually amused. I figured we'd hear his side of the story first before passing judgment, but here we are. We've got a yes. we got three yeses and one no. So, up oh, hand. Now we got several yeses. Okay. Amber lost his nerve in the face of a beast of prey, but he didn't lose heart. He pressed on, and he achieved his aim. And is that not what we ask of our scouts? Indeed it is. Thank you for your honest appraisal, Sid. The fact remains, however, that Ember will not always have a battle-hardened warrior on hand to pluck him from the jaws of peril. All I have gleaned from this trial is that without someone watching his back, Ember is little more than a liability. Wait, Sergeant. Ember still has much to learn, it's true. And this time he was found wanting. But I'd say he's due a second chance, nonetheless. After all, he did do as you asked. With a bit of hard work, any hand can be made to hold a blade, and any mind can conquer its fears. But a scout's nose is different. You've either got one, or you ain't. And by sniffing out that log, young Ember here has shown he has a conch and a half. Wouldn't do to waste it now, would it? Fine. One more chance. I'll do whatever you ask. I'll spend my days and nights in the pit if I have to. I'll show you. Just you wait. Delft as a brush there, huh? But his heart's in the right place. Just like someone else we know. And if you ask me, we've been leaning on him for far too long. I mean, we have. By the time the curse breakers took some of the weight off his shoulders, I reckon. It couldn't hurt. Just don't tell Gav I said so, will you? I won't have him thinking he's been hard done by. <laughs> Next thing you know, he'll be asking for a day off. <sighs> Chance would be a fine thing. Back to work. Forgive me, Sid. This... Did not play out as I expected. <laughs> Things really do these days. 
But that's why we need men like Ember more than ever. Men who can make the best out of a bad situation. Remember that. I, I will, Sid. Thank you. Wait, wait, wait. Are you trying to date Clive Giga? Are you trying to... Or are you trying to date Gav? A new quest is available. God damn it. I'm going to just grow to dread that notification, aren't I? Hi, Spartan. Sid, do you have a moment? By all means. It's my old master. Seems there's no escaping her. She found some way to send me a letter. Well, we did leave her alive. So let's see how much of a wrong choice that was. And something else. Records from a Waluda prison. Seems they were keeping a lot of bearers there. How did she come by such a thing? Finding bearers always was her strong point. And it seems the cells of Balmung Dark are full of them. Foreign captives, the masterless. Bearers no one would miss. And even better for her, bearers with no one to look after them. When Ether started lapping at the walls, the jailers fled. Leaving the bearers to be liberated by whoever happened to come along next. Sid, I'd like to believe that I've earned your trust by now. And while I'm well aware that you've forbidden curse breakers from traveling to Walud, I can't let those bearers die in their cells. I'd rather risk shipwreck on the Shadow Coast than leave them to starve. I mean, duh. We'll be needing the Enterprise if we're going to navigate the Narrow. Does that mean... I'm making an exception, but we travel together. And we stay no longer than we have to. Ash is an inhospitable place at the best of times. We save as many as we can, and we leave. Thank you, Sid. There was a name in the prison register. A name from my past. Chadwick. Another of my former master's protégés. A gifted soldier, and the closest thing I had to family. The thought of him held captive in that place. He must be very important to you. He was. Is. Then we find him. The entrance to the prison lies in the shadow of Ravenwit walls, just beyond the portcullis. We should head there as quickly as we can. I only pray there are still bearers alive to save. As do I, Doris. Good morning, Spartan. Good morning, Steppenwolf. Well, the ether is slowly flooding the entire world, and Ultima is slowly casting a spell to kill everyone in said world. But as we're doing good, we're doing good. Huh, okay. Let's switch this up a little bit, actually. Um, hmm. I think we have enough for that, do we? No, we don't. Um, hmm. Or what? No. This one. There we go. Good morning, Doris. Doris is waiting for me near Balmung Dark. The longer she's out in the open, the more likely she is to be found by Akashic. I need to hurry. This wall. Completely unexplained, by the way. Did you catch that? We go to the new continent, and there's this gigantic ass death wall. They barely even comment on it being there. It's just there. Usually, that kind of thing could be an aspect of visual storytelling, but I'll be honest, I have no idea what that means in this case. Was it made under Odin's reign? Because he's been in charge for 40 years. Was it a remnant of before Odin took over?
Bards are buffs, same as they are in a lot of other things. Just like singers of debuffs. None manning the gates, no. It's a different story inside, though. The corridors are crawling with Akashic. Those dancers. Most likely guards left behind when the wardens ran. If Chadwick was being held here, I worry that he may already be. Don't give up hope just yet, but let's move quickly. Let me check the ground floor. The ether's thick is there. Then I'll search the upper level. Good luck, Sid. Stay safe. Yeah, no, that was my assumption, Dakota. That this is something that predates Odin. But then, what the hell is it and why is it here? Just how bad are the floods inside the walls? Bad enough to turn a bearer. Locked up tight. Fighting right next to the bunk beds. Nope. Shelves. Kingdom of Walud hereby designates this facility a prison for the detainment of bearers, both foreign and domestic. The purpose of this facility is to rear and train a coup of beast for deployment in the field. The aforementioned purpose is a matter of strict secrecy, and any mention thereof is punishable by death. Captive bearers have been provided solely on the pursuit of aforementioned purpose. Express permission is required for any use of bearers in any other capacity. So this place was no ordinary prison. And I doubt they'll have taken the creature with them when they fled. Kuza has long been recognized as an especially aggressive species. This being the case, it was hoped that successful deployment on the battlefield might be a means of inflicting heavy casualties on the enemy. In exercises conducted thus far, however, the beast has proven incapable of distinguishing between allied and enemy combatants. As such, deployment alongside regular troops is not recommended. It is proposed instead that bearer captives be employed to draw the enemy focus, and the beast then driven into the fray in order to achieve maximum benefit with minimal loss of Walluder lives. Minimal loss of Waluda lives. And what happens when they run out of bearers? Even the Imperials take better care of their branded than that. Eh. That is definitely some we have reserves tactics right there. Recent supply shortages left us with insufficient resources to feed the Kuz entrusted to our care. Fortunately, the, observer, the creature was observed to kill and consume bearers assigned to fight beside it in a mock battle conducted as part of its training. The beast was further observed to enter a state of visible contentment upon feeding in this way, suggesting that live bearers may be its preferred source of sustenance. While this behavior is unexpected, it is not unwelcome. Bearers no longer of use for training purposes can now be repurposed as required. They were feeding bearers to it. This is even worse than I'd feared. Nothing but Akashic down here. Hopefully things are looking better upstairs. I should go and see how Doris is getting on. Yeah, usually when they have like a bard merchant support class in an RPG, it has lacking stats, but has some other out-of-combat benefit, like in Dragon Quest III, where it changes its leveling path, but also gives you much more gold throughout the course of the game, stuff like that. Tornico. He's awesome. But ultimately, in combat, his primary purpose is to be able to equip any weapon. Which is nice, but... Oh, 
Oh, they're fantastic people, though. I've been thinking about going to Walud myself. This one. It's a shocking development that someone like Sid throws from around here, quite frank. Congrats, Spartan. No luck downstairs. But I did find out that this place was more than just a prison. Something far more sinister was happening here. I know. I've been reading some of these documents and... It can't be true, can it? Bearers die every day in service of their masters, but this... This is so much worse. Pitting bearers against a wild beast armed with nothing but their wits? And all in order to bring about more death. And not just those who could fight, but the elderly, children even, and those who wouldn't or couldn't were disposed of. Whatever that means. I'm afraid it means they were fed to the monstrosity they kept here. Then we're too late. And I was a fool to bring you here. Don't say that. Did you find anything else? A key. But it doesn't fit any of the locks on this floor. Perhaps it will fit one of the doors downstairs. There's a corridor I haven't searched yet. Finish up here, then come and find me when you're ready. All right. I'll be there in a moment. Hey, Dream Whisperer. Yeah, it's presumed the Dragon Quest stuff is going to be a full remake, but we don't actually know yet. It could actually be in remaster territory. We'll see. They're doing 1, 2, and 3, or more accurately, 3, 1, 2. But... Yeah, it's Mirror Star. Let's see what we can find down here. A survivor. And she sounds close. Who are you? There's no need to be afraid. Are you alone? Are there any other survivors? Some of the guards, they're still here. But something's wrong with them. Everyone else was eaten by the monster. <sighs> of course they were. Thank the Founder. It was worth our coming. But I'd rather we didn't linger. Be ready. Ready when you are. You poor thing. He must have been terrified. Did... did... Jadwick send you? What? He fought the monster. Distracted it so I could run away. He must have sent you. He promised to free the others too. Where is he? He opened your cell, didn't he? He wouldn't be here otherwise. Chadwick. Was that? The monster's back! Chadwick, help! We have to get out of here. Doris, keep the girl safe. All right. You put that bearer-eating bastard in the ground. You've been probably wondering. For me. I can't let it live. Not if it's got a taste for bearers. You're probably wondering, what's a hunt actually like? Well, believe it or not, this guy is actually a hunt. So here you go. This is what a hunt is like. The same fight we've already fought. More health. I love her. I'm not 
ain't gonna bother. The beast will wreak havoc if it ever leaves the prison. I can't let that happen. We'll be here in a minute. Yeah, yeah, they were trying to tame a behemoth. I should also mention there was one interesting fight. It was against three brothers named Cindy, uh, oh god, it was Cindy, Mindy, and Sandy, I believe, is the trio. It was actually like Cindy mid and then Sandy mid and then Mindy mid or something like that. They were just three of the big guys at the same time. I managed to line them up for a Giga player, so I was rather pleased with that. But yeah, the three major sisters, her brothers. I feel like there's another reference too, I don't it now. I guess it doesn't matter. No, 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 not the orc warlords. The uh, the fat guys. Big guy with axe. With a big 200 axe. We've been fighting those since the beginning of the game. I don't recall seeing a Tomberry. Finally. Sid, are you hurt? I'm fine. I think. <gasps> no. What is it? A diary. I gave it to Chadwick before we went our separate ways. He was here. Do you think that creature? I'm sure he fought bravely to the last. The girl is safe thanks to him. Chadwick. You fool. Come on. We have to get her back to the hideaway. We don't want his sacrifice to have been in vain. No. Of course not. I'll see that she's looked after from now on. It's the least I can do. I hear you've barely left the girl's side in days. I hope she's recovering from her ordeal. She is. Slowly, but surely. She's far tougher than she looks. She is. I thank the kid. flames we found her. If we hadn't... I know. But we did. I'm sorry we weren't able to save Chadwick. There's no need to apologize. Without your help, I would never have found out what happened to him. How he fought to the bitter end to save her. To save Heide Marie. That's the man I remember. The man I thought of as a brother. 
I wish I could have met him. I'd like to hear more about your past. If you don't mind, that is. Of course. You already met my former master. She trained Chadwick and I to do two things. Kill and obey. We were supposed to be sold to the highest bidder when the time came. But no bid was ever high enough to convince her to part with us. For years, we were her daggers in the shadows. But we could never quite shake our doubts about the things she made us do. And then, one day, we just couldn't do them anymore. So we escaped. But staying together was out of the question. They would have found us too easily. After so many years of training, the pull to serve was always strong. It scared me to think he might have taken another master, become a dagger in someone else's hand. But even in captivity, the battles he fought were his own. And he died not as someone's tool, but as a hero. Heide Marie is proof of that. Bearers can cast off their shackles. And the curse breakers will show them how. I'll fight until my dying breath to see it done. For Chadwick, and for all of us. Thank you, Doris. We'll be counting on you. So there should now be one hunt, which means there are only two left. Yep. Okay. Thank you, Valerian, very, very much. Appreciate your support. Thank you. I put that down for uh, whatever you put it towards. <laughs> I already wrote it down. Uh, Patch Trail, War Within, and Stranger of Paradise. I do not know Equalitas. Some of them have been chaining. Oh, you all right? Something troubling you? Uh, no more than usual. It's just... Edda's baby will be coming soon, and I wanted to make something for it. I'm sure she'd like that. Back in the north, families would always make gifts when a bairn was on the way. Yeah, I let the little tykes know they were welcome in their new homes, like. So, what's the problem? Well, the problem is that Edda's due any day now, and I don't know if I'll be ready in time. Is there anything I can do to help? Hmm. You know, there just might be. All right, then. What exactly are we making? A good luck charm. But not just any good luck charm. Not just any. No. One made from the feather of a silver chocobo. <laughs> There's not lucky in all the realm, or so we used to say back home anyway. Thing is, they're hard to come by. Had Otto and Karen check with their suppliers, but nothing. I'd try and track one down myself, only... Only the big day is fast approaching. And that's all you need. A feather. That or the bird whose arse it's attached to, aye. I was gonna start by asking around with travelling traders plying the northern borders. Well, there's no shortage of those passing through Martha's. I think I might make that my first port of call. I'll let you know if I find anything. You're a good friend, Clive. I won't forget this. If I'm not mistaken, Game for Chill, there's a specific uh, quest chain that unlocks it, which I'm deliberately doing last. The question was how many quests in general till we get there, and that's the thing I don't know about. Although at a glance, looks like we have 
three left before we get to those quests. So that's probably five-ish, give or take. Listen, Von Falkenstein, we might not have done the side quest to get that, so... You, you just, you can't possibly expect that, okay? While we're here, let's kill another behemoth. Behemoth King. That's okay. Another of the Royalist's guard dogs. Quite a specimen of these two. I mean, jokes aside, it's really sad, if you think about it, that this is pretty low-key when it comes to side quest hell. Especially compared to some of the really bad games about side quests. I have seen some really bad games about side quests. Yeah, churning mists is its own thing. Now that's enough for 14. And then there's stuff like uh, Lotro, which is probably the king of terrible side quests. Nice try. Actually got me thinking, what would be the actual worst side quest I've got? Pound for pound. Other than Lotro, because it's probably Lotro. Radiant quests, by definition, are usually. Dude. At least he's got some unique abilities, that's something. MMO answer. I guess Inquisition would qualify, sadly. Though. 
It's like FF14 and Lotro probably have the worst overall like cross everything side quests I've seen in video games. Wait, seriously, is Mirror Star? How do you. I guess that's fair. If you literally don't do the mechanics, then yeah, you, you will die. Now that be waking. <laughs> Meanwhile, over in WoW. No, I'm, I'm being confused. A little. A little facetious. Woo! 48. It means nothing. Our last oracle. No match for you, I toggle. Uh, one moment, please. Because I forgot where it is. Oh gosh, that's a tough one, Loke. I like so many mechs in Battletech. Picking a favorite. Um, God, give me give me a minute to think about that. I'm probably going to have to narrow that down a little bit. There's a lot of mechs I've always been fond of, like the Nova, for example. Or the Supernova. And of course, I'm, I'm a huge sucker for the Dire Wolf. And there is something to be said about the Timberwolf. It is, it is the iconic mech for a reason. Is there no mini map in this game? I can walk from here. I'm sorry, I know that's not the first time I brought that up. It just continues to be weird. Um <sighs> the thought of this game in a nutshell. Weird design choices. Not even necessarily bad, just... Huh? Why did you do this this way? Huh. Oh, now that would be terrible, Breakwin. That would be negative territory. As is, I just have to pull up the map every few feet if I'm not sure where I'm going, which is fine. It's literally a button press and then we're done. Imagine if the map had load time. I don't know why to make that terrible.
Okay, the very last hunt. Even though the last one we just did is, is actually the final hunt. We're going to do this one last. Because I forgot it existed until after we already beat the Behemoth King. So, without further ado. Yet another one of these things. Probably no different whatsoever from the 50 of these things we've already fought at this point. That's Hunts in a, in a nutshell. Well, it seems this one has a little more life left in it. All right, then. Was it at least good? Camera does not like this angle. Not at all a cultist. Unless you mean, is it a setting? In which case, yes. Answer that question. This one. Oh, in combat? Uh, no. There's a lot that goes into. Uh combat of mech warrior although i've never played shadowrun pnp so i shouldn't say that i'm not sure is, is the more honest question there and by honest i mean you know what i mean Ta -da! is this it Yeah, okay, so I'll have to think about the other white classes, but for the Assault class, as much as I absolutely love the Direwolf and the Awesome and the Supernova and all that fun stuff, I think Supernova's actually heavy. I'm actually going to go with the King Crab. I love the King Crab. I love the King Crab so much, I almost dropped $400 on a King Crab Lego. I didn't, because I'm not made of money thought about it. I'm not going to lie to you. That's one of those, if I won the lottery, I'm going to indulge in getting that Lego. I really want that King Crab Lego. No, I love the King Crab. It's, it's an awesome bag. It looks cool, too, which is important to me. Gotta look cool. Also, respect for the Atlas. Um, let's see. For heavies? I'm getting low. Oh, jeez. This one. You lose. Ah! Photo finish. That is our last hunt. Back to sleep with you.
<laughs> yeah, no kidding. But... I don't know. Battletech hits a really sweet spot for me. It's a grounded sci-fi. Okay, pluses. Um, it involves giant mechs. Not, not mecha. Mechs. So that, that's a sweet spot for me. And it's almost dominantly a very political story, right? It's all about... It, it, it's, it's the Holy Roman Empire in space, right? It's, it's political intrigue and wars and machinations and all that kind of bag. So that's like three... Or, excuse me, three really big things I really like. Just back to back to back. Let's hope one of the merchants here has what Gov needs. It has its issues, don't mistake me, but it's no wonder I fell into Battletech so hard the moment I became aware of it. Excuse me. I'm looking for something. See, I've always assumed, and I could be wrong about this, that Armored Core was Mecha, not Mech. Uh, by the way, for those of you not aware, Mecha is, well, it's anime mechs, right? It's, it's effectively power suits, usually more humanoid individuals. A mech is a tank that happens to be on legs. Yeah, Gundam, exactly. Gundam is Mecha, Battletech is mechs. Um, if you ever played Command & Conquer, I know this is a weird way to go with that. Um, but if you ever played Command and Conquer, you know uh, the GDI leans a lot into mechs, giant honking tanks that happen to be on legs instead of treads. Yeah, exactly, Loeb. Oh well, then I'm your man. <laughs> a silver chocobo feather. Oh, or maybe not. Though you're not the first to mention the bird around here. There was a man stopped by the rest not long ago, claiming he was attacked by a silver chocobo. Near some guide hovel, not far from Eastpool. Most took him for a braggart and a liar, but who knows? Perhaps there was some truth to his tale. We'll see. Thank you. Well, Armored Core 6 will be the first time I've ever actually touched the series, so... We'll see how good of an entry into it that that is. None too curious. Just because the heavens have gone to rack and ruin, it don't mean we have to. Now, let's get this stall set out. How do, traveller? You've the look of a man who could do with a new whetstone? Or perhaps a bawdy etching of the Vicerine? Uh, maybe another time. I'm looking for a silver chocobo feather. If that's the case, Rumours are all you're likely to find. No one has seen a silver chocobo for years. Word is, they were all hunted for their feathers. Some northern nonsense about bringing good luck. <laughs> Didn't bring them much, nor their bows. If any are still out there, I reckon they'll be doing their damnedest not to be discovered. You're probably right. Thank you anyway. So I'm looking at a list of uh, mechs here. Uh -huh. so I gotta pick a medium and a heavy. That's gonna be the hard one. Or sorry, a light and a heavy. The medium's easy. It's the Blackhawk. I'm almost positive. I'm gonna double check myself on that, but I'm pretty sure the Blackhawk is my favorite light. Look, Daddy. Shiny so brightly. Isn't it pretty? Yeah. Pretty blind sinister. Wait, can you see the damn thing from here? Nope. Alright, whatever. Look, we've already fought a red chocobo. Do we still still need to find a silver one? Can we just get a red chocobo feather? Can I help you with summer? You wouldn't happen to sell silver chocobo feathers, would you? <laughs> I deal in fruit, not fancies. But if it's fancies you're after, I suggest you try Rhiannon's ride. Was a silver chocobo seen there? Oh, yes. If you believe the ravens of a madman. It wouldn't be the first time. A silver chocobo sighted in the hills near Rhiannon's ride. It sounds almost too good to be true. But, since I'm already here... There's actually another uh, assault mech 
that is in qualification. I couldn't think of the damn name of it, but I just found it. The Fafnir. The Fafnir is just... <laughs> I don't even know what to say about this thing. Imagine two artillery cannons with two uh, heavy assault cannon arms on top of a giant plate of armor, and that's the Fafnir. That's the, I want whatever I'm looking at to die right now, Mac. Let's see. I think I'm really torn. I actually have, I've always had a weird soft spot for the catapult, uh, which is a heavy, I believe. There's a lot of good heavy mechs, like a lot of good heavy mechs. Uh, Mad Dog comes to mind immediately. And uh, the Thor, which is the summoner, I believe. No, I know. That's pretty much why I don't like Gundam. I'll live by bandits for a change. I mean, yeah, the, I, I was trying not to just pick the Marauder, because if I'm being honest, the answer really is the Marauder. Good lord. I was trying not to default to that. It's like picking the Puma for my favorite light. It's just such a gimme, you know? More tracks. And these look fresh. The Chocobo was here. And recently. Perhaps it still is. As for my medium, I'm torn between the Stormcrow and the Bushwhacker for very different reasons. The Stormcrow is something of a I don't know. It's what I get in if I need if I need to feel the medium, and I'm really good at it. But the bushwhacker, that's your uh, that's your workhorse mech that can do so many different roles, and it can do them decently. Well, I'll be damned. I didn't even have to kill it for it. Nice. No, no, no. I don't want to kill you. Like, I really don't. It's all right. I'm not going to hurt you. Just borrowing a feather for my friend. Thank you. Let's get this back together before they change their minds. Thank God I can teleport. Centurion's a solid pick, too. See, the Puma is just such an easy pick for the light, but... It was no hmm. trouble at all. Still, I appreciate it. Clive, you're back. How'd you get on? Any luck? Any luck, you say? Oh. Yeah, the adder. Crystals crack. Is this what I think it is? Where in the hell did you find it? It's a long story. Right there on the road to Eastpool. <laughs> Who'd have thought it? Everything up there's been abandoned for years. The empty cabin made for the perfect shelter. Though I fear my presence may have forced the poor creatures to look elsewhere. Don't blame yourself, Clive. The blight's right on Eastpool's doorstep, 
they'd have had to move on before long. Even if you hadn't have turned up, they'll find a new home. Trust me. After all, that's what us endangered animals do. Anyway, what matters is, you managed to nick us one of their quills before they could run off. And now all that's left is to fix it to the carving. I didn't know you could carve. Mm, reckon there's a lot you don't know about me. Like the fact I'm as good with a whittling knife as I am with a sword. And that bone ember gave me's a dream to work with. What did you say it was from again? An Avis? But it weren't your Avis, Sid. I slew one of my own at last. So all those long nights in the pit finally bore fruit. I'm proud of you, Ember. <laughs> Don't speak too soon. I ain't done my trial yet. There we go. What do you think? I think if you ever hang up your scouting cap, you'll be able to make an honest living. Now will I. <laughs> I should go and see if Ed is awake. Give him my best. Eh, you can give it to yourself. Come on. Yeah, the reason I tend to remember it as the Puma and not the Adder is Mech Warrior 3. The Adder was kind of one of my go-to mechs for a huge number of missions in that game. Feeling. Well, thank you. Is something wrong? Wrong? No, nothing like that. Uh, uh, what it is, is... Uh... Go on, please. It's beautiful. Did you make it? We did. I, ah, uh, it's from all of us here at the hideaway. Your new family, like. It's a good luck charm. We may come up north when a bairn's on the way. I, I, I mean, a, a baby. To let them know that they're part of the family, too. Oh, I, I, ho I hope you like it. I, I don't know what to say. I thank you, my lords. For everything. If there's anything you need, just let us know. I will. Ah, <sighs> Clive. Fancy a swift off. I'm thirsty. I could be convinced. Probably von Falkenstein, because then we also have the Nova. And the supernova. I'm sorry if it was snow. I don't think people could truly withstand the whole show. Don't you think you've had enough? No, we're celebrating. I'm gonna be a father. <laughs> I think Edda might have something to say about that. Ah, you know what I mean. Bit of light in these dark times. <sighs> it wasn't long after me tenth name day, my mum told us she was with child again. <laughs> I was over the fucking moon. I was looking forward to having a little one to lord it over, what with me being the runt of the litter. I thought I'd finally have a chance to prove to the world that I could be a big brother. Imperials came the day she went into labor. Had myself a baby sister. And then I didn't. My whole family gone in a blink while I hid in the cellar like the spineless little arsehole I was. Great brother I turned out to be. I 
I'll never be a leader. And I'll never be a hero. I'm just a daft little dog who comes running when his master calls. I'll never be like you, or Sid, or Jill, or even Toggle. <laughs> Have you finished? Maybe. Do you know why? You're our best scout. Because you don't need anyone to hold your hand. Without your resourcefulness, your courage, your determination, I don't know where we'd be. Maybe hanging off a cliff like... Uh... That was only the once. Exactly. You learn from it, and here you are after founder knows how many missions, stronger for everyone. <laughs> and let's not forget Rosalith. Who was it who freed me from the dungeon? Who was it who ran to Jill's rescue? That would be me. Because you're our brother, Gav. My brother. <sighs> Your brother. Which means that when the time comes, I get your room. And your sword. It is a nice sword. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, no, that's that's pause for one me. too many. You may have had ten too many. I said I was thirsty. But I get back to work anyway. After I walk this off. Uh, Clive? What is it? Thanks for, you know. I know. I've pretty much always been a fan of the bro archetype, and Gav fits it to a T. Winter meat. <laughs> Said I was thirsty. <laughs> Speaking of bros, we technically have another one in this game. Clive, my boy! Rutherford informs me that we owe you our thanks. Hadn't intended for you to get involved, but such are the times we live in, huh? I would have done the same for anyone else. You're far too modest, Clive. You'd make a terrible nobleman. But tell me, is the realm truly in as dire a state as Rutherford suggests? From what little I saw, you were right to be worried. Uh, I suppose I should have expected the worst. But I was rather hoping the great and good of the realm might have things a little more under control. Alas, it seems that firm leadership is in short supply these days, and without it, the people are bound to lose their way. We must move quickly. But where do we start? True, the challenges that face us are many. But in my estimation, there are two key areas to be addressed before any other. The realm's armies and her larders. As you've seen firsthand, it's every man and woman for themselves out there. 
Certain cities have banded together to try and maintain some semblance of order, yes? But such cases are few and far between. And yet, the only remedy for the chaos that faces us is unity. A unity that transcends even the borders laid down by our ancestors. In short, if Storm does not stand together, she will fall apart. But how would one even begin to unite the realm? The armies, my boy. As I told you already, we begin by restoring order among the ranks of those sworn to maintain it. Sadly, I doubt I could convince even the lowliest gaggle of privates to dig a latrine together. But I do know someone the High Commanders have been known to listen to on occasion. Field Marshal Eugen Havel. I thought he was retired. He was, until an Akashic army tore through Randalar and killed most of the rank and file. There is no man alive more capable. Literally. And as luck would have it, I've already spoken with him on the matter. Of course you have. And he's agreed to help. On one condition. That he first speaks with you personally. Havel has always been a man of frustratingly rigid principle. And he has certain qualms about clasping arms with... Well, with an outlaw. I extolled your many virtues as best I could, of course. But the old goat was adamant that he be allowed to appraise you in person. He don't mind, do you, my boy? Okay. Of course not. As long as chaos reigns, we will never build a better world. I'll do whatever it takes. And if the Field Marshal wishes to speak with me in person, then so be it. That's the spirit. I'll leave for Randalar at once. Would you send a Stolas? Of course. Rutherford is already in the Dalmechian capital. I'll have him tell Havel to expect you forthwith. Excellent. Thank you, Uncle. No. Thank you, Clive. That's an interesting question. If you are wanted by a polity that doesn't exist anymore, are you still wanted? Okay. And to answer you, Rax, the Andor stream uh, ruminations will start going live January 27th. Okay, that's that's a lot. Um, it occurs to me that a single word of thanks does not suffice to express my gratitude for reuniting me with from a distance. The tome made me who I am today, and yet I thought I should never set eyes upon it again. That those who took it from me had forever robbed me of a part of myself, but now I am whole again thanks to you. I, reg I regret I can only fill the gaps in your knowledge, not the holes in your soul. For which reason I shall be forever in your debt. <laughs> I've burned myself for a sunrise I will never see. The two of you have been together for what probably feels like a lifetime now, but there's still a lot to learn about that hound of yours. Ah, he'd step up in front of a bloody raging behemoth if it meant protecting you, and he's done so three times. But that doesn't mean you should take it for granted. At the end of the day, he's a hound, and sometimes he just wants someone to pat his head and rub his belly and give him a handful of Kupo nuts. Better remember that. Well, I am not so foolish to believe that a single shaming at the hands of town urchins can dispel a lifetime of hatred built up in one's heart. Really? You could have fooled me. Just as a pot cannot be made clean by reminding it of its grime. It takes effort, persistence, and more often than not, a stiff brush and a bucket of lye. But more than that, it just takes time. Fortunately, your courage and leadership has granted us that. We must now decide whether to embrace it or to waste it. A wise man once said that night is always darkest before the dawn. It's a good thing I can count one who burns so bright amongst my friends. I write to you in thanks in consideration of what you have shown from the names written in the page of the Book of Martyrs. I know it would move them deeply to know the first shield of the Phoenix laments their passing. Though each and every one of our member but though each and every member of our order stands ready to sacrifice their lives in service of the Phoenix, I do not doubt that those who are taken before their time go with regret from the long years of duty left undone. If they should live on in the memory of the proud son of House Rossfield such as yourself, shall surely go some way to soothing their sorrows. Here, not long removed from when you last placed yourself between us and peril, I sit and pen yet another letter in which I try to find the words to somehow express the gratitude of an entire town. Still, something feels different about Aladdin's triumph. Where in the past we leaned ever so heavily on your good graces, this time we found strength elsewhere, in ourselves. And also us. 
Our hardship has shown us that we should have been what well, should have been apparent all along. We are not as different as we want to believe. Does a peasant love his homeland any less than a noble, and does a bearer love his family any less than another man does? It is this love that has united us and given us true strength. Should every thrall, Akashic bandit, and brigand in the realm <laughs> have charging our gates? <sighs> we will not fret, we will not falter. We will fight, and we will win. Well, you didn't think I was just saying about that stuff about hiding my engine, did you? Wouldn't you know what? I've already found a fine spot picked out and everything. If you're going to go with this grand adventure, you'll need to be quick about your business with that ruddy god of yours. Take too long and somebody more clever than you might beat you to the prize. I suppose in case I could bury one of your lesser inventions. God, I suppose I have Calamus. And a quest we'll go ahead and pick up here. Uh, okay. It's usually me making demands of Hippocrates. I wonder what this is about. I tell you what, just for you, Game for Chill, we'll go ahead and change the DLC outfits. First, I want to see. This, we're starting to get a little bit busy here, aren't we? We're still missing five. Which is strange. We've been doing pretty much everything. We actually still have not unlocked the DLC. That quest right there through that wall will unlock the DLC. Or rather, the quest after it. To be more accurate. So we'll just switch up to DLC, 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 DLC. Oh, we're already at DLC. And this is our actual sword here, so we can go to whatever we want to now, just cosmetically. Honestly, the Gaia Blade is still my personal favorite. But I know what you want to see. Lawsman Harpocrates. I received your note. Ah, yes. I expect you're wondering what this is all about. <laughs> you spoke of making amends with Dion, but I can't imagine what for. Then I should begin by telling you that I was once his tutor. This was some years ago, of course, before I joined Sid in his hideaway. At that time, I was counted among the foremost scholars of Oriflam, and was accordingly invited to the palace to supervise the young prince's education. All to ensure that the future Emperor had a firm grounding in, well, everything an Emperor should. History, religion, commerce, government. Alas, our time together was cut short when Dion left to join the Dragoons. His studies no longer being deemed necessary. I had not expected to meet with him again, least of all here. Have you spoken with him? No, I... <laughs> I have yet to find the right moment. His Highness always seems so preoccupied, especially when alone. I would not wish to disturb his ruminations with idle words of greeting. Not when I know he dwells upon the evil Ultima had him commit in the Dominion. The guilt weighs heavily on him, I know. But as you say, that was Ultima's doing. Surely you can't blame yourself. When I first met him, it was not guilt but his people's expectations that weighed heavily upon him. And I did nothing to ease that burden. He bore it alone, until the day he could not bear it any longer. It is one of my greatest regrets that I only ever offered him my wisdom, when what he truly needed was friendship. The blame for Dion's transgressions lies not only on his shoulders, but on mine. I see. I'm ready to help you in any way that I can. Then I beg that you bring me a wild wyvern tale. Apothecaries across the ages agree that even to glimpse such a flower is to be granted inner solace. Fabulists and fraudsters all, of course. But there is oft a seed of truth to be found where even the most outlandish opinions align. Well, it can't hurt to try. Where can I find this flower? 
And how will I know it? You have seen cultivated wyvern tales before, I trust. The lily-white blossoms from whose roots the poisonous ink for the brand is distilled. Well, those which grow in the wild differ only in their purple hue. The harsher the environment in which they are raised, the deeper the colour. There is a waterfall in Rickmal's roost across the strait, where the flowers once grew in abundance. Whether they still survive there, I know not. But, try as I might, I can find no likelier location. It's all right. I'll find you a wife in tail one way or another. Thank you, Clive. And please, be safe. I'm assuming these don't chain, these should be our last two side quests before we get to the last two side quests. Look, shut up. <laughs> um, in Lord Trahexia? No, of course not. Although it looks like the bot is dead. Y'all killing my bots, God. I can see Clive with the gun blade. Just for cosmetic -y purposes. Hey, Skywolf Dragon. Uh, spoiler warning, we're pretty much at the end of the game here. We're about to start the DLC. And by about to, I mean in like seven hours. But we're getting there. We're at the point of no return. We're going to the last boss, and after we do the DLC. Don't look down. You deserve a rest. Best starter sword design, aka the iconic sword design. So let's see, in one we've got your classic. Two, we have the rapier looking thing. Three, you have the little dagger. Four doesn't really have one. Five doesn't really have one. Six has the rapier thing. It's actually more like a scimitar. But Seems not. this place has been flooded twice over. Cut this out. Seven, of course, has the buster. Eight has the gun blade. Nine Local has the twin daggers. Next to a waterfall. Shouldn't be too hard to find. Ten has uh, the water sword. I can't think of the name of. Unless you're talking about his, his starting sword, in which case he's got the hook sword. Yeah, that's what I thought. Brotherhood is Titus' iconic sword, but it's also not his starter sword, which is what Trahexia was asking for. Twelve doesn't really have anything. Thirteen has the other gun blade. Count Steiner from FF9 off the deep rail. Fourteen doesn't really have one. Here it's just your basic sword. So of that list. Here they are. Might as well pick enough for a bunch, I suppose. Osman, I found the flowers you were looking for. You did? 
I think I did. So I will be back in a bit. Uh, I don't know how long I'm going to be, so I'm going to go ahead and push things down for a second and pull things back up when we're back, okay? And then we'll go ahead and finish the, the side quest and we'll start the DLC. I'll see you all in a bit. Ignore the fact that I'm suddenly in a new shirt. Actually, what do you think? I guess I can look at it myself here. It makes me look bigger than I am, but I suppose there's no avoiding that with a chest as large as mine. <laughs> Anyways, I'll see y'all in a bit. <laughs> 